Devin Pike of the Dallas International Film Festival. And another great get for James Faust and his crew was Midnight Children, the adaptation of Salman Rushdie's novel. Uh, you could call it Prince and the Pauper Across Time. You can call it a metaphysical switching of bodies. You can call it a great film, and that's the important thing about it. Satya Bob is here, um, one of the leads of the film. First, thanks for coming to Dallas. Oh, really thanks for having it. me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, long production uh, schedule for you this week, so I appreciate you squeezing in the time to come and talk about the film. How did you come involved with the production? I was up in Toronto um, shooting another movie, and I had uh, worked recently in a play with a colleague of Deepa, someone that she had worked with. Um, uh, uh, many years ago, and he said, look, Deepa Mehta lives in Toronto, you should sit down with her. And so I said, well, of course, you know, she's a fantastic filmmaker, I love her uh, Elements trilogy. And so I said, yeah, and we sat down for coffee, and um, it kind of went from there. I never really imagined or dreamed that I would be playing this role, and when we first sat down, I, I didn't even think it was kind of a professional meeting, but you know how these things happen. So slowly the personal sort of melds into the professional and you know, a year and a half later we were in Sri Lanka. Talk a little bit about the script because Salman's writings are always more intricate than you can even get on screen in a lot yeah. of instances. Some of the film adaptations have not always lived up to the books that he's been able to produce. How did Midnight's Children become you know, a more cohesive script than I think that we've been able to get out of his uh, work so far? Yeah, well, you know, um, someone does write uh, sort of with diversions in a way. It's like sitting down with an old relative and they sort of start telling you these stories and you go meandering through many different time periods and many different characters and then somehow you get to the end and it's not that you can necessarily pinpoint the, the dot to dot of the story, but you get a sense of it. Um, however, in film, obviously, you kind of need to change that and you can't just sort of allow yourself to wander aimlessly through this narrative. So um, he and Deepa worked together um, for quite a long time to develop the script and uh, interestingly enough they tell a story that they came and sat down and sort of had each made a separate list themselves of the essential scenes that had to be in the movie from the book and um, when they compared their lists they were almost identical. So it actually uh, was a very smooth process, the adaptation. I mean, it took a long time uh, editing it down. Initially, it was actually two films. They had written the first script as, as a sort of a two-part movie. Um, but then I think logistical and funding uh, you know, constraints made it quite obvious that that wasn't the best way to go about this. So they condensed it into one, uh, one film and have managed to, I think, really keep a tight narrative through line while at the same time get the sense, the sort of all-encompassing sense of the novel, the magical, freewheeling sense of the book. Is it harder when you're dealing with a production like this um, with so many different moving parts and you know, the, the effects and all the rest of it, is it harder to get a grasp on the character um, unless you know, you're, you're working with somebody like Deepa who is actually you know, really talented and able to keep you on task. Yeah, you know, Deepa certainly is fantastic um, at, be, at keeping an active focus, you know, keeping you on uh, your emotional trajectory, keeping you in character, keeping the relationships between all the other actors really uh, tuned finally to the, to the movie. But then again, um, it also was a very immersive experience. You know, I'm not from India, I'm from London and subsequently Chicago. I live in Los Angeles and so I spent, you know, sort of five, six months total in India and Sri Lanka. And um, I was there about two months previous to do prep work and sort of do my own research, my own character work. So by the time I was on set, um, the kind of line between Satya and Salim had sort of blurred and I was able to kind of stay somewhat in character, give or take the entire production. Do you feel like this movie has the possibility to break out of the, it's written by Salman Rushdie, ooh, he's still got a fatwa out against him. Do you think that this has the opportunity to break past that stigma and actually reach a wider audience? You know, I hope so. I mean, I think that what's interesting is that there is really very little uh, controversial material in this book or in this film. You know, we certainly, we talk about the emergency, we talk about Indira Gandhi, but that is something that is pretty undisputed in the history books and is even openly spoken about and taught in India. So, um, yes, there was a lot of controversy over, over Salman's satanic verses, but this book is not uh, something that has ever gotten that sort of reaction. So, um, 
you know, I think that anybody who sees the film uh, will see that it's actually a very warm, open-hearted family story, a, a sort of a coming of age, if you will, um, uh, for both a boy and also a country. Um, as opposed to some sort of political, um, you know, polemic out there arguing a point. And I think that the, uh, the desire to hype the controversy is something that is actually at times a little frustrating for all of us associated with the film because um, that really isn't what this film is about. This is a very warm uh, family story. Have you had a chance to watch the film with an audi with with a paid audience? Yeah, Not outside the edit bay. Yes, I have. I've seen the film. Um, I've seen the film in a few different contexts. I uh, I saw it at the Telluride Film Festival, both at its sort of big gala screening, but then also at just like a normal festival goer screening, um, and then around the place. You know, I haven't actually seen it in a cinema post release. It's been out in Canada, the UK. India um, and across continental Europe, but I haven't been there while it was released. I've sort of been there for the premieres or for the festivals. So you're busy, man. You're busy. It's been busy, <laughs> but I'm really <laughs> excited for it to finally open in the states. It opens in New York on April 26th, LA on May 3rd, uh, in Dallas and some other cities on May 10th, and sort of rolls out between April 26th and the end of May. And so that I'm really excited to see how it plays for sort of like a, a paying public audience. I was about to say, have you had a chance to? I mean, in in those screens. To, to you know, get a feel for if the audience is actually connecting with the story on the level it should. You know, it's wonderful. The thing about this film is that, um, like with the book, there are many levels. And if you're a history buff, you can sort of get into the period design and get into the the historical facts, the chronology of of, of the events in you know the in India's first thirty years of independence. Um, but that is not the only mode into the story you know there's also a wonderful um range of crazy funny eccentric characters like in all of someone's books they're almost chekhovian in the way that every character has some weird and idiosyncratic little detail about them and um the performances is the cast is full of some of the real greats of indian cinema and the performances are fantastic um and then there's also, you know, there's also the magical side of it, the sort of mystical, magical, wait, what's really going on? How do these kids have these special powers sort of elements? So I think that people have really connected on it on many levels, but um, most consistently, I really have heard people get an emotional sort of get at the end of the film. They really feel connected. And it is, it's a big story, and it goes through many years and many ups and downs. And I think when you finally see this boy reconnecting and, creating another new family for himself, one that you feel will actually last for a while, um, there is a great sense of relief and, and, and sort of accomplishment. The first time you saw it, were you sitting there going, okay, I, I actually got this one right. This one is another is another great you know, performance to put up there on the shelf. You know, I, it, the first time I saw it, I was very, very nervous, as I think you can probably imagine. Um, and yeah, you sort of go through it with a little checklist. You're like, okay, didn't screw that scene up, didn't screw that scene up, didn't screw that scene up, and you sort of go through. Um, I think it was you know, the second or third time that I saw it where I was able to kind of look at my performance and the film kind of as a whole and see how the trajectory worked. And I am really happy with it. I'm really happy with how the performance came out. Um, you know, I take Salim from 16 to 30, and so there's a big range there. And often when you're shooting you know, out of order, and you know, picking up a little scene here, picking up a little scene there, doing a scene when you're 30 and when you're 18 in the same day, you worry, you know, does right. that track? Does this character track? And do you see a change? Or is it just gonna be these sort of vignettes, moments of this kid's life, but it doesn't feel like one whole arc? And so I was very happy to see that it did communicate and that you do sort of go on this journey with him. Um, and also with the film, you know, the film really has a wonderful pace. It sort of brings you in, in this almost merchant and ivory kind of fantasy way. And then as you start to get into the more political stuff, it really gets quite edgy and quite, quite, um, you know, action heavy. And then uh, the end, it's this kind of very peaceful, placid, coming to terms with with everything that's happened. The pace is actually what really sells it. If if it if it if it goes full bore at the beginning of it, I think it loses a lot of the audience yeah. at that point. Yeah, no, it sort of draws you in, and and there's. Uh, the cinematography is phenomenal. The art direction is amazing, and I think that that also really helps you 
kind of get get an entry point into this quite foreign world, but then also be able to know it as if it's your own. The film is Midnight's Children. It is a fantastic flick. And if you didn't get a chance to see it at the Dallas International Film Festival, please make sure you see it on its theatrical run. Uh, May, May 10th, 10th uh, here in Dallas. Also, uh, there is a VOD uh, deal in the works. I do know that much. I don't know the dates on that yet. But consult your listings. Also, DallasFilm.org will have all the details on all of our films here at the Dallas International Film Festival. Man, thank you so much for bringing it to us. Thanks we really very appreciate much. it. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely.